Hello and welcome to the Optimal Being video blog presented by ConsciousLifeNews.com, your daily source for news and articles about conscious living on planet Earth. I'm your host, Jonathan Wilbanks, and today uh, I'm going to speak about the third part of my series on, on emotional toxicity and emotional detoxification, specifically as it relates to psychotropic medications. And by those, I mean antidepressants, anti-anxiety medications, and prescription ADHD stimulants. Um, so I'm going to speak for a few moments about the physical aspects of some of these substances and, and the problems and dangers uh, inherent in them. And then I'm going to speak about, a, I think, a very neglected uh, part of the, the conversation about these substances in regards to uh, emotional toxicity and, and numbing people and disconnecting them from, from their emotional bodies. And I'll also say that I speak uh, to this point from... Uh, from a place of, of personal experience, because I, I definitely, at a point in my life, had a, had a pretty bad problem with uh, my dependency on uh, my prescription Adderall medications. So I'm, I'm intimately familiar with the effects of, of many of these substances. So let's, let's take a look for a moment about the dangers of these substances themselves at a neuropharmacological level in terms of, of brain chemistry. Uh, and uh, all of the substances that I spoke about, so anti-anxiety, SSRIs, which are antidepressants, and then uh, prescription stimulants, uh, carry the, the similar risks here, but I'll, I'll pick on prescription stimulants because that's the one that I'm most personally familiar with. Um, so the first problem is that uh, we're over-medicating our kids. There's a huge number of children in America uh, who are going on prescription drugs, and I think uh, part of this is a misdiagnosis. Uh, in our society of, of so-called ADHD, uh, and we're trying to medicate kids to, to who don't fit into the mold of standardized education, and we're trying to medicate them uh, into compliance and conformity with the system and, and jam a, a square peg into a round hole. And, and that doesn't always work. So instead of looking at, at how does this child's um, learning style differ from you know what's, what's being offered in the, the standard education system, we try to medicate um, those incongruencies away. Uh, so I think I think the, the prescription of these substances in the first place is, is usually not appropriate. Uh, but taking that a, that a step further, let's look at what actually happens to the brain. Let's say that someone is, is hyperactive. In the case of, of prescription stimulants, they act primarily on the, the dopamine system. Uh, SSRIs, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, work on the, the dopamine system. And most anti-anxiety pills are, are um, GABAergic, work on another um, neurotransmitter group, uh, another neurotransmitter called GABA. But let's look at, at prescription stimulants. So um, the way these work is they stimulate the release of a few substances, most notably dopamine, which is the, the pleasure chemical, uh, which is related to our, our reward response and our reward conditioning. And this tends to help people at least uh, initially focus better because it gives them a, a sense of gratification, of reward for whatever uh, they're mentally engaged with at the time, be it writing a paper or paying attention in class or, or whatever. Um, it also increases uh, norepinephrine and noradrenaline production. Uh, now, the downside to this, and it's a pretty big downside, is that these drugs lock us in a, in a um, mild but chronic state of parasympathetic overdrive. Essentially, they can lock us into a, a constant fight-or-flight response. And initially, this can make people feel like Superman because you're getting a, a, a small but, but constant adrenaline rush. Uh, you don't have the same need for sleep that you, you did at one point. And everything feels easier. Everything feels easier to focus on because you're hyper alert. But in the long run, not only can this burn out our, our central nervous system and, and dramatically compound and accelerate uh, the negative effects of stress because your body is effectively in a constant state of stress, uh, but they can uh, cause changes in, in the brain, uh, something called down regulation. So the brain always wants to return to a natural balance, a state of homeostasis. And if you were causing the overproduction of dopamine, for example, then over time the brain will compensate for this by down-regulating the sensitivity of dopamine neurons. So it will therefore take more and more of a dopamine release to stimulate those neurons to the same level. So then you have two options here. You can either take the drug away, at which case those underlying dopamine neurons have become desensitized and the underlying problem is actually much worse than it was before someone went on these medications, or uh, two, you can continue to up the dose, in which case you've got a prescription for eventual um, dependency, if not outright addiction. Um, so I believe that, and the same thing can happen with, with SSRIs and anxiety medication. I mean, you look at the, the withdrawal from anxiety medication from, let's say, Xanax, for example, and it's absolutely horrendous. 
uh, people's nervous systems actually do the opposite. They upregulate. They become more sensitive as a result of the constant depression of the central nervous system uh, by these substances, and you take them away, and their anxiety is 10 times worse than it was before. Same thing happens with SSRIs uh, via the, the serotonin uh, system. So on a physical level, these drugs are a temporary band-aid that will mask the immediate symptoms uh, that, that they're trying to treat, but they will in the process, over time, make the underlying uh, condition in the brain much, much worse than it was before. So I do not believe that these substances are a solution, and I don't believe that they are sustainable, and I think that this is why you see so many people who have, who have been on these substances for, for several years who end up having to, to uh, work with a whole cocktail of psychotropic medications. And they'll start with an antidepressant, and then they'll end up uh, throwing a stimulant into the mix, throwing an anti-anxiety pill into the mix, and you've got people who are on these just incredibly toxic, incredibly complex cocktails that are pulling the brain in all of these different directions, and it's like we're trying to, the, the prescription approach here is like a, a cat trying to chase its tail um, to constantly uh, correct and stay one step ahead of the body's natural, of the brain's natural ability for adaptation and that constant drive back to homeostasis. So there's the physical component of, of why I, I would really advise uh, individuals and especially parents uh, of children from, from using these substances. But there's another, and I think, uh, more important component to this, and, and this relates to what I've been speaking about for my last two video blogs, which is emotional toxicity, is that I think, uh, more or less without exception, all of these psychotropic medications, so stimulants, antidepressants, anti-anxiety medication, um, induce a, a numbing effect on, on our emotional body, on, on our um, emotional awareness and, and guidance system. And they disconnect us from those emotions. And if you think about it in the, the case of something like prescription stimulants, this makes perfect sense because, again, they're putting you into a fight-or-flight mode. And so, evolutionarily speaking, if you are prepared to fight off a saber-toothed tiger, which is ultimately what the fight-or-flight response is there for, then, uh, of course, your, your brain as a compensatory mechanism is going to disconnect you from your emotional body because it's not the appropriate time to deal with it. You have more immediate survival needs. But when you walk around in this constant state, um, it can really, and especially over time, cut us off from our emotional body. And the problem with that, and, and I encourage you to watch my first two videos on this if you haven't already, I should have said that at the beginning, um, but the problem with this is that all of the emotional responses that we should be having, that we should be processing, so to speak, in our daily life, uh, end up getting buried. That We end up carrying them around in the body because uh, these drugs are not allowing us to have that healthy relationship with our emotional body and access uh, what we are supposed to be feeling and release that so it gets pent up. And when you have enough emotional trauma that gets uh, repressed and, and pent up, you have enough anger, you have enough frustration, you have enough shame, blame, guilt, all of those things, they get pent up and they get compressed into this incredibly pressurized, uh, these incredibly pressurized pockets in your body. And, and they'll become so pressurized that if, if some external event uh, happens to trigger or access that, that compressed um, emotional space, that you end up with this uncontrollable geyser of these negative emotions that just start spewing. And that's when you get rage. And rage is, is ultimately repressed trauma. Um, but I think that this is, this is a very important component in particular of the gun control debate that we're having right now as, as a country, uh, particularly as it, as it regards uh, school shooting incidents. Because uh, almost without exception in the very, unfortunately, tragically long list of school shootings that we've had since Columbine, uh, prescription psychotropic medication, psychiatric medication has been implicated or has, has been involved in, I believe, every single one of these. And in, there might be a few small exceptions, but for the most part, this has played a role in all of these. And I think that the tendency of, of the mainstream dialogue and conversations to say, well, these are crazy people, so of course they're going to be on psychiatric medications. They obviously needed them. But I, I think that, that there's something more complex going on here. I think that these drugs, again, disconnect people from their emotional body and they create a breeding ground for rage. And I, I firmly believe that you cannot walk into a school and shoot uh, dozens of people, um, especially children, without coming from a, a place of, of a complete loss of, of control, of, of absolute rage. And so I think that while this entire conversation has been focused on guns, there's a really important conversation uh, around the use and overuse of psychiatric medications, particularly in children, that's not being discussed and that we really need to bring in to this natu national conversation. 
Um, but yeah, the, the accumulated emotional toxicity resulting from a complete disconnection with the emotional body that arises from the chronic use of these psychiatric medications is, I think, a huge risk factor and a huge danger inherent in using these drugs. And it's something that not a lot of people talk about it. So I'm putting it out there for your consideration. If you're on antidepressants, uh, again, I, I never ask you to just take my word on something, and, and maybe these, these medications are appropriate for, for you or for some people, but check in with yourself and say, what effect is, is this drug having on me? Is this really helping me be a happier person, or is it helping me uh, put on a mask of, of happiness? What is my, since I've been on the substance, what is my relationship to my emotions, to my emotional body? Has it gotten stronger, or have I become disconnected? How do I deal with anger? How do I deal with with rage, how do I deal with frustration now that I'm on the substance? And and see what, what response you get. And, and I encourage you to be honest with yourself. Um, now, if you find that, that these drugs really aren't working for you and that maybe there are some problems arising, getting off of them can be quite a challenge in itself. And I think that most of these psychiatric medications are inherently addictive. Uh, and that's something that, that I have some personal experience with in terms of how to get off of these substances and then how to repair and rebalance the brain after the fact. And that's something that I will be speaking about in uh, future episodes of, of this video blog at length because I know that there, when I was, was going through these challenges, there were, wasn't a lot of information on how to rebalance the brain after the fact. And so that's something that I want to share with you. Um, but for now, that's all I have to say on psychiatric medications. Uh, one, they're addictive. Two, they, uh, over time, make the underlying problems that they are supposed to treat uh, exponentially worse. And that three, they disconnect us from our emotional bodies, creating a uh, perfect condition for rage to accumulate, and that uh, this is far less healthy for us in the long run uh, than dealing with these emotions uh, as they arise in a, in a healthy, natural, and balanced way. So I hope this has been helpful for you. I'm sure there's going to be a few of you out there who uh, disagree with my assessment, and that's okay. I, I certainly welcome uh, any dialogue or any conversations that you'd like to, to have around this topic. I encourage you to leave comments on the YouTube, this YouTube video as well as uh, on the original article at ConsciousLifeNews.com where this appears. And as always, I encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can receive uh, my weekly video blog updates delivered straight to your YouTube homepage. Thank you so much for joining me today, and until next time, be well.